Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers and welcome to my demonstration of the Eventide H9. Now the Eventide H9 is a behemoth in a box. Essentially it contains all the information of the various new Eventide stock boxes, of which there are many. You can go into each stock box, you can change all the algorithms, you can modify them, change them, store them as presets, you can do anything you want. It's a vast, vast engine of creation and as such this demonstration will serve only to skim across the pond of the details that you can observe within if you purchase one and spend a lot of time reading the manuals. <laughs> Talking of manuals, it comes with two of them. Let me show you what you get in the box. So here's the exciting H9 box. Um, anyone that purchases one of these will enjoy the box for many reasons. Here's the first one. When you open it, and you get a beautiful little bag. Now, I don't know about you, but when I get an effects pedal and a really cool bag uh, with a brand and a little tie on top, I just feel like it's a touch of quality that makes you enjoy your product just that tiny bit more. There are two kinds of H9. This is the H9, but there's also an H9 core. Now both are physically absolutely identical. The difference is that the H9 comes with nine very popular effects algorithms, and the H9 core comes with one of the algorithms. There's also a difference in price, of course, with the H9 core being a hundred pounds cheaper than the H9. I guess it's also worth mentioning that you get a free algorithm coupon with either of your chosen H9 pedals. Hi, my name is Rob Chapman, and this is Patch 85. cherish my Eventide bag because probably like you if you are watching this video you were probably a Steve Vai fan back in the 80s and loved all the harmonizer work on um, Ballerina, on Passion and Warfare, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, Eventide, 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 I don't know, Eventide. They're great, they make amazing pedals and effects. They're a company that have been doing this for a long time in very high regard and this product, uh, there's a lot to it, there's a lot of depth if you want the depth. And I suppose the main features that Eventide are pushing here are that you can connect it to your iOS device and control it remotely from there on. I have an iOS device. I have an iPhone by Apple products. <laughs> here is my iPhone and my iPhone is an iPhone 5S. Now what you do, once you've read the two massive manuals, is you download the H9 control application. So here's my iPhone, here's my various apps and my games, and here's the H9 control, 
which if I touch it brings up the app, which is very slick. It contains an awful lot of information telling you here that my H9 is linked to my phone via Bluetooth and yada yada, lots and lots of stuff you can do, presets. What I do is I go to lists, find the foot pedal, it brings up all the presets from my foot, from my pedal, and then I can scroll through them and in real time just pick one that I particularly like. For example, 11 is lots of fun. Uh, I made a list, actually 25 is awesome because it's a nice tremolo. And as I scroll through these and select them, it literally changes them on the pedal. So I've gone for the classic crystals here. If, camera lady, we go to the foot pedal on the floor here, you'll see it now says number 11, classic. If I now touch my phone to 17, it changes it to 17. See, that's magic. So here's 11, which is classic, and it's crystals. And if I play the guitar, it sounds a lot like this. <laughs> All of the effects that you're hearing are coming from the Eventide, although the gain is about to come from my signature amplifier, the Victory Silver. <laughs> So what you get there is a lot of the kinds of effects that when you listen to and start using, you immediately start writing and creating tunes. It makes you tend to play in a more creative way, and I can't quite explain why, but it does. The presets you scroll, when you get a pedal edit, you get the presets, you go through all of them with your foot, and you listen to each one, and you jam in them, and it's two hours of jamming through presets. And once you've kind of got over that, which is why you write a list of presets like this one on the floor here. Those are my favourite presets, next to the T. What you then do is you go to each one and change them and store them or you create your own and have lots of fun sort of expressing your own self through discovery and making your own patches or you might just really like the, sort of the presets it comes with and use those yourself. Here's how you do that without the app to begin with when you buy the box and you've got the pedal plugged in and you just want to play. Literally, you take your foot. Now any foot will do, but I like to use a right foot to begin with because I find that easier. And you make sure either your preset button is pressed or not. And then if you tap on the uh, left side, you'll see it scrolls through the various presets. And to activate one, you press activate, which is the left button, or bypass it to go just to the amp. So now it's active. Here's how this particular patch sounds. go to a different one, say so there's 19, and it's active. And I've got a funny kind of reverse delay that I'll never use. Do another one. Uh, this is a tape type delay. It's a world of discovery. Let me take you back to the application 
uh, for your iOS device to show you a little bit more of what can be done. So now I liked uh, number 25 was one of my favourite ones, which is this ramp of snips here. And if I double click on it, it brings me into a whole different bunch of things I can change. Click on it again, it gives you a pedal format, which we're all familiar with, and I can change the various parameters just by touching and dragging, like we all do all day long with regular pedals. Um, now I like that because it's something that we're familiar with. It brings it from the app world into something that you would do. This is really cool for a studio, especially if you're just on the fly engineering or producing a sound. Maybe you're reamping and you've got a loop that you're just affecting and changing. This is very useful. Let's just alter it now. So we'll increase the depth modulation and the speed and we'll change this and that'll do. Let's have a listen now. And then let's change it again just to prove that it works. So I'll move this, I'll increase the speed and the depth dramatically, I'll change it to bias type, reduce the drive, and let's increase the spread, up the output a bit because it's a bit quiet. Um, by the way, you can change the output for each one to match whether you're going through the effects loop or whether you're going through some other source. And change to envelope filter. That's quite nice actually, it's quite a pleasant patch. So you can see you can change everything with the application, um, or you can scrap the app, as uh, I'm beginning to prefer to do, but you could do some of the editing on the pedal, well actually all the editing on the pedal, with the giant um, rotary dial in the centre and a finger. I've chosen this finger in particular to do my editing with. So I've chosen patch number two, one of my favourites, it's called Ballerina, and it gives you that classic kind of Queen type vibe. <laughs> Awesome fun, isn't it? So it just makes you feel like a hero. So if I want to affect this on the Eventide box, all I do is they've got these three buttons here with the various different elements you can affect, or you can press and hold and go into a slightly more advanced section. So this is, for example, the mix. I'll dial that down and have less of it. <laughs> so you can hear now that there's less of the effect in the mix. Pitch, the, the amount of pitch, the kind of pitch. We put more mix back in so it's more obvious. Eventide feedback, be warned about that. Suddenly it's been like Alex Skolnick back in the 80s and Dragon's Kiss. So this is the pitch. is the feedback. Let's increase that because there's nothing better than feedback. You can simply affect things there. You can press and hold to get to a more advanced list, but it's much easier on the iOS device, iPads, uh, Macs, iPhones, that kind of thing. You can plug with the USB cable straight into the back of the pedal. It is also my die 
enabled, so you can my die into it and connect all sorts of external jiggery pokery to it to make it do what you command it to do. of exciting effects and tones and it's really for me it's a studio tool more than a live tool but it's a very useful tool. I've been Rob Chapman, take it easy, Chappers out.